Now this was a super productive day in the shop. We managed to get the rim, back, back rim, off of the MT-09. Did a couple other things regarding cleaning up the back area of the bike. Got the bolts polished. Showed how I managed to get the disc and the, the little ring that controls the ABS out. And we found out that these were in with red Loctite. And boy, were they a bear to get out. Luckily, I had an impact driver and, uh, and a lot of banging around. But they were really difficult to get out, unlike the front wheel, where they came out a lot easier anyway. But it was a very productive day, as I said before. No rain today, so we were, we were able to get a couple of pictures shot out in the driveway before we take the back wheel off. Of course, the reality is we'll never get any more pictures of the bike with the blue and the silver wheels. From this point on, the next time we do a photo shoot, it'll have a silver wheel front, silver wheel back, and I will be one very very happy motorcycle owner love that mt09 now yesterday we reached a, a real watershed we have the front wheel done we even got a photo shoot of it now i had one other thing i wanted to do with the camera i wanted to try to take some pictures with the camera on a tripod as the wheel went by just to see the sun reflecting off it because when I noticed something outside, when I was pushing the bike, I looked down at the wheel and it was, it was looking like a diamond ring. I really liked it. Now, I, I know this is not stuff that matters to a lot of people, but the people it does matter to, it really matters. Now, one of the things that photo shoot did yesterday, and I sat down by the computer last night and looked at those pictures over and over and over and over. I, I saw a couple other little things that I'd like to change or I'd like to modify. And I make myself a little priority list because what's going to happen when spring gets here, there'll still be things on the list. But I, I always like to think this, that all of these motorcycles are a work in progress. And there's never a time I'm out here, I'm not, I'm not oogling them and looking at it and saying, yeah, I could polish that bolt. Uh, this would look better, a different color. Uh, I could polish the grip. There's always something. And that's what I like about the hobby of motorcycling. Because it's never the same two days in a row. And one of the things I always want to have, I always want to have the whole motorcycling experience. I've had dirt bikes, I've had trials bikes, I've had, there's probably a lot of things I haven't had, track bikes, race bikes, but, but the best, and I really am honest about this, the best and the most fun I can ever remember having was when I got this MT-09 last year, and it just blew me away how much fun it was to ride. And having all the safety features, and knowing that I could customize it over the winter, it's a very special bike to me. And having seen it out in the bright sun, now these colors, and I know on video they don't really show up the way they should, but in, in a bright sunshine, that is just such a nice color. And it's not, the thing I was trying to avoid is making it have that tinfoil chrome look where it's, uh, it's a little too sparkly to be a motorcycle. That has a very, a very, I don't know what the right word is, a very nice look as far as I'm concerned. That really worked out just better than I ever thought it would. And it's a real good match to his twin sister, the R1, which we, we got it all. We actually, we had all the bikes outside yesterday. Did our uh, one of our winter run-ups, which I like to do because of my background in aviation. And I just hear an en hearing the engines run, hearing that cross plane do his thing. And then seeing all the wheels out in the bright sun. It was a, re a very exciting day yesterday. But today we're going to pull that back wheel, and as I look at the bike with one, one silver wheel, and, and I got a couple little things I want to try differently on the back wheel. We'll see if they're an improvement, or, but no matter what, we'll share that information. And that's the whole purpose of our channel. So before I pull the back wheel, one more time, I wanted to just take it out in the sun. The sun makes this color really look I don't know, the way I had envisioned it. And it's a, it's a real hard thing to explain to people when you have a vision in your mind or a picture in your mind what you want it to look like. I didn't want it to look like, well, like that I had chrome wheels. I've seen sport bikes with chrome wheels. Mm, it, it looks too much like uh, it doesn't belong there. This really floated my boat. So I was really happy and I, I pushed it in front of the tripod from every angle I could just to get a final picture because now I'm done taking pictures. Now, of course, the overall objective of all photo shoots and all of these walk, I'll call them a walk by for lack of a better word. The, the whole idea is I want to see how this is going to look. I'm looking for things when I do the back wheel. I might want to do a little different. I might want to change. There might be some other thing. 
and it's a it's an ongoing learning experience but having put this one in the bank I'm I'm very excited to finish up the back wheel. I really am excited, and I can see it's actually a pretty nice day today. Not too bad, anyway. I get the itch to get this thing done, and but I never get, I know smart enough over all these years of doing things, never rush it. It's gonna take a week or two, it's gonna take several work sessions, and I never wanna rush it. That's the, patience is king. And when you rush this kind of work, in the end, you pay the price. Well, I took some pictures, took some short videos of that front wheel. It looks like a blue skies day. Karen has a lot of errands to do today, and of course somewhere during the day we have to go with, see progress on the kid's house. The next thing is a really, really strong cup of coffee. Get motivated and get that back wheel off. Something about that silver wheel, when it's spinning, it looks a whole lot different than the blue wheel. I think it looks a lot better. Okay, after a quick cup of coffee, we'll be out here, pull that wheel and get started and add this to our list of fun things that we've done in the world of motorcycling. And every one of these bikes has so much time. I went over it yesterday on a video. I think there's thousands of hours. I have it written in books, but I never, I never added up the total amount of time I've spent restoring motorcycles. <laughs> it's probably more. I shouldn't know it. Something I, something I, maybe I really don't need to know. Oh, that coffee is going to taste good on a day we were working out in that cold garage. But it is warming up little by little. Now, taking the tire off the back wheel off of the uh, MT-09. Very similar to the Yamaha R1. And they're both engineered so you can just one wrench. Unlike the GS, which is uh, <laughs> a little bit of a pain in the neck getting the back wheel off. And thank God, some of the things modern bikes have over these old classics. Getting the back wheel off used to be an ordeal. You'd need two wrenches. You need more than two, in fact. And modern bikes, boy, they've made a lot of this stuff so much easier. Now, I still was never really able to find out. I guess this is just to keep the wiring that used to go out to the tail here. I can't, I can't figure if this does anything productive here to, right now. In fact, there's a guard inside there. I'll probably take that off, too. Just extra garbage to get dirty and have to clean. If anybody knows what that part is supposed to do, it isn't on Partzilla that it's a guard or anything. So anyway, but anyway, this, this does come apart relatively easy. It's a one wrench wheel removal, relatively straightforward. We'll get everything cleaned up once we get the wheel pulled off. And I am really looking forward, like, like almost never before. Actually, it's the same as with the R1. When I got to this point with the R1, well, I was pretty excited. Once again, modern bikes, really, there's a lot of things about them that are just so much better than the, the older bikes. And this, I found this bike relatively easy to work on. But again, I'm still, I'm wondering, I won't throw it away, of course. I'm wondering what that was supposed to originally do. Oh, pull a disc bolt, pull a disc up out of the way. Always make it as easy as possible. Now, again, we have that the wire that controls the traction control and the ABS that's very very delicate I don't want to make anything make myself a problem that I don't need now on a caliper the back bolt is an Allen the front one is not an Allen I'm no, not sure why they do that but Yamaha certainly knows more than I do now I'm very careful here because I, I don't want to damage that wire I don't want to do anything to make this job harder than it has to be I want to spend all my energy getting this wheel ready. I'm going to take that wire out just to get it out of the way, that, that ABS wire. Now I'm sure you could do this without, without taking that wire. You could snake it through and everything, but you know what? To damage that part unnecessarily, oh. And this is such an important safety feature of the bike. I don't want this to get, to take a beating. With that done, the caliper comes off very conveniently. Just take that out of the way. That piece is now free. And we're ready to pull the axle. And it's always my habit to keep the parts and the tools I need to do this job on separately. And just so you know, one is an ordinary bolt, one is an Allen bolt. The Allen bolt one goes in the back. And it would probably be a problem if you were, of course there's no thread, so you really can't put them in backwards. 
and I'm not sure why they did it that way, but again, Yamaha is a lot smarter than I am. And they make a lot more money than I do, so it's, it's a lose-lose for me. Okay, so the whole idea is to tap the axle out. I want to get my feet underneath the tire, take some of the weight off. Just makes pulling that axle out a little bit easier. I want to keep that part with that spacer right in place. This part, of course, goes on the side. Would be kind of self-explanatory, but there is, a, there is a piece here that keeps it from rotating. That has to slide into this part. It's inside the swing arm, and that's critical. If you line this up in some other way, and I don't know if you can, but, but believe me, it, would, it could ruin your whole day. So I'll keep those parts on that side of the bike. This side, and again, I don't know about that, that chain thing. We're going to find out about it. So the next trick would be here is get the spacer out of this side. Put the spacer down there. Try to get this as far forward as possible and pull the chain off. Once the chain is off, you can pull, slide the wheel right back out. Okay, the spacer that goes on this side, I'll leave on that side of the bike. Spacer that goes on this side, and they are different. Keep that on that side of the bike. There's our traction control ring, and our sprocket controller, sprocket holder. And I can see already that, wow, this is going to be a lot of work doing this hub, because you basically see a big part of the hub. So, not that, not that we're going to try to get too crazy about saving work. This is always a labor of love. Now I'm going to clean up in here, probably not right now, but while paint is drying or something, or I have some time, I want to do a real good job cleaning. I'll steam clean in here. And this piece here, I don't know what that does. And if I have a part, I don't know what it does. Yeah, I don't know why I need it. So looking in there at the converter, this bike does not have a muffler. It only has a con catalytic converter, no muffler. And I do remember when I replaced that tail light with the Graves tail tidy, I remember the parts were significantly heavy and for all purposes unnecessary, that to me anyway. And on our channel, we do have the, uh, the whole video of how to put the tail tidy in and believe me, the directions you get, we're not going to cover every step. You got to cut a piece, there's a lot of little details. I tried to make that video as good as possible because I know that's going to be very popular. Now, I have the parts that go on this side, on this side of the bike. Parts that go on this side of the bike, on this side of the bike. And it's time to get down to a nice warm cellar and clean that wheel. And those parts will sit on the side they belong on until we put the wheel on. So before I head down the cellar, I was looking at how this, there's one on each side, of course. And I'm not going to remove them. I originally was going to remove them. But then I looked at how this swing arm is made. It's basically a hollow shell. And this, I think, might be in there for a structure. So rather than try to get too cute... I'll just, when it comes to clean up time, I'll clean it up real good. And I'm going to leave those two parts in there. But that thing that's on the back hub, it, it, it bugs me that I, nobody knows what that is. And when you see all the parts that come off of the back, when you go to put that tail tidy on, you think that tail tidy is going to be a five-minute job? You better dedicate more than five minutes to it. It's a big job. And I tried to cover it without leaving out any steps, and there is some cutting involved. So before I pull the wheel apart, I do a little forensics all the time now. And believe it or not, this is one of the Michelin tires that had a red dot. Now they don't have it anymore. They do, they don't, I don't know. But that dot, when I installed this tire basically 4,000 miles ago, it lined up with this valve. So what this is telling me is this tire, because it's in the direction of rotation, it's telling me that this tire has slipped on the rim and from whatever, from acceleration. Now, if it was in this direction, I'd say it was from hard braking. But that, that is telling me something that I have to be aware of, that that tire did slip just a little bit on the rim in the course of uh, 4,000 miles. And that's always something you can check to see if you line it up and you have a, an alignment mark and 4,000 miles later it's over here, you can determine if it's from braking 
or for or in some people who are doing wheelies and stoppies and stuff there'd be other things now that'll usually happen if you run the tires with too low of a pressure i don't and i've never had a low a really low pressure but if you were trying to run really low pressure like in drag racing <laughs> that's one of the symptoms but in drag racing they would have serrated the wheel or put wood screws or something in it there's there's other tricks they do i'm not up to date on it but anyway that's a little forensic information we learned from that tire. And I remember from having this apart before, this was kind of a snug fit. You needed to really be careful prying it up and out of the way. Okay, so I like to lay out all the parts on a clean towel. And just to, I want to get everything clean on a step-by-step -step basis. You can see there's plenty of, plenty of grit and grease and dirt from the chain loop down in there. And we, we're going to be real careful probably spend the rest of the day cleaning things so when we go to work on this it's exactly it's as clean as I can possibly make it so here's the parts we want to clean up and just make sure what everything that we're going to work on because once I start touching things and preparing the sanding I don't want any of this material any of the grease or dirt that's on here each one of these parts has to get cleaned thoroughly and that's a little bit of a time-consuming job but then you work and clean and I really hate working with anything dirty or greasy. So the first thing I'll run, just just touch these, the bolt ends, the nuts. These are special nuts, by the way. They have a self-locking feature at the end. Special nuts that I'm, I'm sure just made for this job. Now, it's a small detail, but anytime I have anything apart, I want to polish it, clean it. It's so much easier than when it's on the motorcycle, when you have it apart like and I always think details count. And you know what I like about this? If, you, if you're in a furniture building uh, hobby, you know what happens? You need a garage, a barn full of big tools and big stuff to restore motorcycles. You don't need that much stuff, but you do need a buffing wheel. Now, even though I'm not going to use this part, well, potentially, unless I find out this controls the, uh, the, the something on a bike that I don't want to get away from it just would probably be easy to keep the whole back of the bike clean the less parts you have to clean I'll put this aside just in case I need to uh, to change my tune in the future and put this back on actually it'd be easy to put back on so it's not a big deal but it is interesting that Yamaha decided they needed this maybe it's just to meet EPA regulations or something I don't know Interesting that nobody really knows what this part does. That's interesting to me. Now, if you notice, the one side of this, it's not symmetrical. So when these go back in, they have to all go back in, or obviously you can't get the part on. But this is so there's more cushion on acceleration, and I think that's the whole engineering part of it. But I want to be sure when I get these back in, of course, that they go exactly the right way and nothing. If you had one out of place or one wrong, it could be a problem that that's some good engineering though there and then now the older bikes they're symmetrical so hmm i don't know <laughs> now i always tell people that are going to paint or restore or do anything before you even start with sandpaper or anything get everything clean if you have to use two rolls of paper towels it doesn't matter it does it, it takes you all day because once you start working on it when you start and you're grinding and sanding and and painting and priming and everything and you have grease on your hands, you, you've really stacked the deck to where you're going to probably have some kind of an issue somewhere down the road. So we got a sealed bearing in here. I want to clean all around it. It's, this is just a little time consuming, but this is a part of it that I always think the first day I take something apart, if I spend the whole day cleaning, I don't care because that pays dividends. Somewhere down the road, I come out ahead of the game. And in this case, this is going to be, I think, maybe the uh, focal feature of the bike. I have this back wheel real nice to match the front one. That color is just beautiful out in the sun. And I'm surprised the experimental paint worked as good as it did. I didn't have to go back and undo or do anything over. So we're just going to repeat pretty much the way we did the front wheel. And then when we get the back wheel on, do a big photo shoot and celebrate. I always encourage everybody, even if you're just working on a bike, 
unless you're if you're at a dealership and you're getting paid by the hour you probably don't do as much cleanup as you should but if you're working on your own stuff why not have it clean it's really more fun working on anything that's clean now since this is going to require some diesel fuel i'll probably do this outside because what's going to happen to this i'm going to stink the house up and then what happens karen will find out where i keep the gun and shoot me now i can make this a little bit easier by just cleaning off some of this this is the i do use nothing but chain wax and i've really never had any real issues premature chain wearing out or anything but but then you do have to clean the sprocket every once in a while. I can even do this kind of thing when it's on the bike, just to make it a little bit easier to clean. But good old-fashioned diesel fuel will clean this up very quickly. But anytime I've ever used it in a house, Karen's not real happy about it. I don't blame her. I guess she was never a diesel truck driver in her, uh, in her childhood. <laughs> she prefers the smell of cookies. Anyway, I'll take this out and clean it with some diesel fuel. Good old-fashioned diesel fuel always does a good job of this kind of a cleanup. And, but I would highly recommend not doing it in the house because, and the rag, once you use it with diesel fuel, that's your diesel fuel rag, which is what one of these are, or it's in the garbage. But this will soften it up, and I'll do the last little cleanup with some simple green down in the house once I get the heavy stuff off. And the diesel fuel, you sometimes you have to go back and forth three or four times to get the diesel fuel to cut through it, but chain wax is good stuff. I've had good luck with it, and I just don't like the idea of the whole back wheel always being covered with oil or grease. Or back in the old days, oh my God, the stuff they used to make in the back in the day. <laughs> what a mess! Modern stuff, modern bikes, everything is so nice. It's unbelievable. Now using a soft wire brush. It you can get even some more of it off, but believe it or not, a lot of the stuff on a sprocket was really tenacious to get off. I was really impressed. Getting all the goop off of the sprocket is really a tenacious thing. I even used some brake part cleaner here, but just trying to finish it up so it's clean before I put it out on the workbench. And then we move on to the next part. It usually gets right at the very the bottom here where the lighting holes are. It's a little full of grease. Now what happens is this, the sprocket is steel and it's got some kind of plating on it. And the plating, some of the grease or dirt or whatever it was on there, it really was difficult to get off. This, this was way harder than I've ever experienced before. And it, it just took a lot of effort to clean that thing up. Well, I think we got this cleaned up as, as reasonably possible, as good as possible anyway. Get that grease off of there, that's all. That really was more work than you think it was. Now, I know the ring, the screws that hold the ring in were really Loctited in there like crazy on the front wheel, and I'm not sure, I know we have the wrench, it's, it's a, the star wrench. And it's not an, a typical Allen wrench. I know we had to use the, uh, well, we're going to find out. We, we had to use the uh, the punch to get it out. Yeah, we're going to have to use the punch. Those things are really in there. I'm trying to see how much torque they're in there with. A lot. All right, so we'll get, we'll get the impact driver and just cut our losses here. Now I'm guessing the reality of why these are so Loctited in here is because this is some kind of a, a safety feature for the, uh, the electronics. But, there we go. Once you loosen them up, they'll come out with a regular wrench then. It's, I was so shocked. These are not big screws either. I, I was always thinking the discs were going to be hard to get out. And it was those little screws that were difficult. Okay, now they'll come out. Again, I'm sure this is part of some kind of safety uh, mandate by uh, who knows who. But it, no sense fooling around. Just get the impact driver. Now, I'm not an electronics person. I don't know anything about this at all. 
So what I assumed was it was reading light through there, but I could be wrong. It looks like it might be reading magnetically. I don't know. Interesting to find out. Maybe I'll look that up on YouTube tonight, see if I can figure it out. Anyway, we got that off, and that, this can be, if you don't have the right wrench or if you don't have an impact driver, best of luck. These, these seem like they're in a lot tighter than the ones in the front wheel, so I'm not going to fool around. Just go get the impact driver. And if all else fails, I'll have to heat them with map gas, but hopefully that's not going to happen either. I'm trying to see how much torque these are in with. Oh! Holy mackerel. Whew! The only guy I know who could get these out is Turbo Steve, barehanded. Ah! Oh, oh my god. I guess they have to be that way for a reason. I don't know, but without the impact driver or map gas, good luck with this. Oh my god, the whole tire is moving. Unbelievable. But you got to be prepared for this when you're going to do a wheel. Oh, jeez. Holy mackerel. I'm getting too old for this. We need some nice young mechanic around here like Miles. Oh my god, there we go. Okay, it looks like we're the worst is over. Yep, now they'll come out with a ratchet. Oh, and you're going to do a custom wheel. Always be prepared for, uh, have a map gas around and have an impact driver if you can. And a real Allen wrench, not the ones that they sell for 59 cents. And of course, I wanted to polish the bolts while I have everything apart. It's so easy to do it. And once it's all back on the bike, a lot more work to get that polished. So here's the culprit on this. You can see the red Loctite. It only takes one drop of red Loctite. <laughs> it really, that really stuff, it really sticks in there. I've really had trouble with bolts, especially the Yamaha, the R1. I had to buy bolts. I, they were, even with the map gas, they were hard to get out. Yep, that red Loctite is a killer, boy. Red Loctite. Now, I always use blue Loctite. I want to have the option of taking things apart a little more conveniently. So all this stuff cleaned up, we're ready to pull a tire apart. I gotta go have a cup of coffee. This was a lot more work than I thought it would be. It usually is. I just break for cleaning this up, and I am gonna head out and have some coffee. This is really bad. And I still wanted to get that tire off today if I if I can. But Karen has plans. We're supposed to go over to the kids. They're gonna start. Well, they're ripping a kitchen apart already, and he's putting windows in. So. Whenever the, the, de the session may end prematurely here, I don't know. You never know. Anyway, that cleaned up, brake part cleaner, and we're ready to have some coffee. It is officially coffee break time. Now, I like to, before having coffee, look at all the parts that I got cleaned up today and got ready for really trying to set the day up for tomorrow for a super productive day. And we're well on the way to doing that. After a good cup of coffee, I'll ask Karen what she has planned here. She's planning plans within plans. Now, when you can't get the bolts out and you don't have an impact driver, just drink some more coffee. Now, I wanted to show some of the wear bars on the tire. This is really wearing very well for a soft tire. And believe me, see, this is where the rubber changes from to where it's soft. You can see the, you can just peel it up with your fingernail. It's so soft. But... The fact that it's wearing so well in the middle of the tire, now boy, is that ever a bonus? Because the Dunlops, they wore out on the edges, and the middle was nice and was had plenty of rubber. And the, the, I guess Dunlops are real soft on the edge. I don't know, but this is, this is, I think these are really premium tires. They really worked well for me, and I'm not even, I don't even think I'm halfway through. That, as you'll see, the bars, look at where the bar is down there. Holy mackerel. You should have a lot of more mileage on these. But it is funny how you can see the softness of the rubber, and you can see actually see the joints, too. Now I'm measuring this with my durometer, and it's this is ambient temperature now. It's not out in the sun. It is still 
the softest tire that I have in my shop. And when I tested it up by Perry's, it was the softest one of all the road tires. Obviously, the track tires are softer. Now that, that's, that is, a, I think, a pretty amazing tire. I was very happy with the first set, and we're going to put the second set on in the course of doing this wheel. So before I go to pull a tire, I want to just get as much of the road grime and whatever else is on here off. Generally clean it up just a little bit. Since we are going to reuse this tire, I'll put this in inventory. And by the way, it's a great idea to keep it in a cellar, not in any place where it's going to get sunlight or heat. So the next thing is take out the tire valve, the Schrader valve as it's called, and let all the air out of the tire. And we used the Motion Pro, Pro bead breaker on the front tire today just for something different. I wanted to show how to use the Harbor Freight bead breaker. They both work pretty good. I showed two common ways to break the bead on the front wheel. We did it with the Motion Pro. The spoons, this way, I just want to make sure, make sure this is all the way down before I pull the tire off. Both ways work pretty much equally well. Now, the Motion Pro, the bead breaker, can be used as extra tire irons, and the rim protectors, the, the big long blue ones, those, they are my favorite. They just, they give you a little extra protection on a rim right here when you're trying to get that last little bit of the tire off. They work great. Now, since I'm going to use this tire over, I'll clean it up a little and keep it in a spot that's dark and cool. Heat and light are the two things that deteriorated. And I don't think we even have half of the, I'm thinking we have less than half of the, uh, the tire life on here. Now, that the tire's spinning. I'm not sure if part of that isn't the fact with that traction control and you're hitting some some heavy duty shifting there. I don't know if that's it, I don't know. But nothing bad happened, so this tire will be back. We'll put that on another bike and we'll see how many more miles we get. That'll be a very interesting test. So the only thing left here to do today, and this is, good. This is gonna be a very productive day, ending very soon, because we're gonna head over to the kids and see how they, we're supposed to get the windows in today, I think. They had the windows in the truck yesterday anyway. But anyway, this is moving right along, and anybody that's watched the front wheel part of this, you know, it's, it just quickly becomes a few days of grinding and sanding. And I see another thing. I notice now one side is pretty clean, but the other side has all this writing, and just like the front wheel, oh, there'll be a lot of grinding and sanding and whatever. But when I get to this point, I'm thrilled. I want to get the curvy girl out, and I have that special wrench that I ground the edges off. There's the nut. I had to grind the edges to get in that recess. I think for this wheel is one. For the Yamaha R1 is the same. We'll save this. Do a final cleanup on the wheel, and we have had a great first day. So we really made some good progress today, and I thought I'd share a quick story. Now, this is a funny story. If you know anything about football, you know who Vince Lombardi is. There's a story on Netflix about, or uh, well, Prime, I don't know. Karen's a big football fan. We watched the show together. So the opening scene of the movie is his daughter, and Vince is driving the car, and his daughter is reading the map. And she says, Dad, Dad, we're going to Green Bay. It's not even on a map. And Vince Lombardi thinks for a minute, and he says, when I'm done, it will be on the map. Now... A lot of people think if I, they were to visit me today and look at this wheel and say, oh my God, that's going to be so much work, grinding, sanding, polishing, yeah, buffing. Six days from now, it'll be on the map. Well, Karen took out the map and she said, let's go over and go see how the kids are doing. It's been a really long day. I know this is a long video. It's been a long day, but we really made progress on the first day of the back wheel. Time for our daily inspection here of the construction site. He's got the windows in already, wow. He was getting ready to put them in yesterday. Very cool. Finally, he showed me how to get to, to the video. He loves, he's a new subscriber. <laughs> oh, the windows look great. Thank wow. You, thank you. I know you had them in a truck yesterday. Thank you, thank you, thank you. 
Is Elvis, is he working you too hard? Come on. He looks like done. he's a brutal boss. The roof shingles are done. You got the shingles done? Oh, wow. Yeah, so now we've got some beautiful bays coming up. Oh, you got four. I'm, I'm going to go riding tomorrow. Oh, gee, I'm not, I'm, in, I'll ride in. by and wave to you. <laughs> rub it in, rub it in. <laughs> I'll, I'll pick up the beer bottles for you. <laughs> Stand back. These guys don't look like they've ever done this before. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> This is my first rodeo. Don't. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. See, I do it headed backwards. Let Elvis try it out first in case it doesn't hold. <laughs> Extra motorcycle storage coming up. I want a nice secure door on that. You can put all my Benelli parts in there. And I am always impressed. It's just like restoring a motorcycle. It's a mess. It's a mess. It's horrible. It's terrible. There's dog, garbage hat, sandpaper. And all of a sudden, one day, it's back on the bike, polished and looking like it's worth a million dollars. Anybody's ever done this kind of work, you know how gratifying it is to see a, this part where it takes shape every day. So every day we like to visit and see what's the wood piles going down. And it's true, in the end, it's going to be beautiful. They're going to break through the kitchen today, I think. Today or tomorrow, they had to get the windows in. So if you want a quote on any kind of construction job or motorcycle restoration, <laughs> just call them. There's the number. And Karen just checked the weather and he said, holy mackerel, tomorrow might be a riding day. One of the rare, rare winter riding days. Maybe tomorrow. So hopefully you enjoyed the video and possibly uh, picked up some good information or some inspiration to do uh, some custom work on your own bike. We have over 2,400 videos out there now. I think most of them have something useful. For sure, they're all entertaining. And every once in a while, you can learn something, you know. Even I can learn something. Anyway, we, we still want to find out what that back ring is. And... We're going to have a teaser day tomorrow. I don't know if we're going to ride or work or what. But this has been a brutal, brutal winter temperature-wise. But it'll be so nice to have this back wheel done and have this bike ready for what I hope is going to be one of the best summers of my whole life. We post up something every day. Thanks so much for watching.